Well, hello there, motherfuckers. And it's been a while since I've done one of these little individual videos. Uh, you know, not in a raw SmackDown review, just a normal rant video. So it's time to do one of those here. And I think you know what it's about. Well, you've seen the title already. But let's talk about this uh, first ever women's pay-per-view, WWE Evolution. So I've already talked about it extensively in my Raw and SmackDown reviews. So check those out. But I guess I should expand on it, give it some individual attention here in its own video to kind of stress my point. Talk about some of the positives and negatives because we don't want to all be negative. I don't want to come at it because there's potential here. It's just we, we all know how it's going to turn out. So, you know, oh, the, this has been mounting. We heard it in the Raw promo by Stephanie McMahon. You know, we had the first ever women's elimination chamber, the first ever Hell in the Cell, uh, the first ever women's Royal Rumble. And, you know, I talked and ranted on the women's Royal Rumble, and I said two women's Royal, two, uh, Royal Rumbles is, is too much to handle. Two hours of Royal Rumbles is, is, is too much. It's oversaturating the show with, with, with too much of the same concept. And I says, you know, there's just not enough women to get this thing over. But I wasn't aware that they were going to call on people from the past so much as much as they were. And that was probably the most I've ever seen them dip into their, uh, their alumni talent pool as much as they did. So... That's what they're going to do here in this pay-per-view. They said there's going to be women from uh, the past showing up. So obviously you know that they're going to try to at least go to the top. Try to get Trish Stratus. Try to get Lita. I assume from her performance in the Royal Rumble they'll try to get Michelle McCool. The Bellas will probably definitely be showcased. It would be hard to think that they wouldn't. And I talked about it. Listen to my SmackDown review. I talked about some potential matches that they could have. You, you, you could have Alexa Bliss and Trish Stratus. You, you could have Ronda Rousey facing off against any of these women from the past. You know, you could get Nia Jax in there against maybe Beth Phoenix or put her up or get against Tamina, which is something, an interesting match for two current stars. But you know, it's not all going to be just, you know, women from the past versus women from the present. That, that would be, you know, probably too good of a concept for them to really go through with. It would probably be the best thing for them to do. It would be the most interesting concept. The other thing is, they only have one belt. Which kind of scares me because that's probably going to be the thing that they're going to do. Especially with Bailey and Sasha being together. I was kind of thinking, I didn't mention it in my Raw review. But they had been toying with the idea of a women's uh, tag belt. They already don't know how to handle the, the men's tag belt, and they've already got a lot of teams already. They, you know, none of them are really. Uh, I shouldn't say none of them are any good because there are a lot of good ones. Authors of Pain, you know, the Revival is not a bad team. The Bar, they're all talented. They just don't know how to use these teams. Like I said, look at Sanity, the team I put over every week. I said that's a money team right there, and they. They, you know, they just have them job out every week. You've got Eric Young as part of that team, a guy that looks like Killian Dane, and you know they they're there losing in the first round tournament match, and they just got there. So you know they already don't know how to handle the men, and they're gonna go ahead and they're going to probably do this this women's tag belt. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they introduce a secondary women's belt. I know what they were trying to do at one point. They were trying to make the women's title feel just as important as the men's title. Uh, and they just they just are never going to be able to do that. Not even TNA as hard as they try with their knockouts division. And they got closer probably than WWE ever had. They're just not going to be able to do it. No one is going to because I've already said it, guys. Try as they might. And these women are so talented. You know that I, I've put over people like Alexa Bliss. I've put over Trish Stratus and Lita from the past. You know, I, I've put over um, Charlotte. And I've put over, you know, back to Alexa Bliss again. Her promo skills and how much of Mickey James is a veteran. And I've even said Nia Jax or character. She could be so much better if they just go with a straight up monster gimmick. And I even said... Despite her, hey, hey, character, Ronda Rousey, 
is impressive in the ring. And I said, when on Raw, when she was beating up the security guards, I says, Ronda Rousey could be a badass, and sometimes they hit their mark with Rousey. It's few and far between. But I had see, I've seen glimmers of brilliance from Rousey. And it's mostly due to Rousey having some natural ability. And I, and I know there's people on the internet who give her a tough time, and I was giving her a tough time. I was giving her hell. I made a video called Ronda Rousey Sucks, for God's sakes, that had many, many angry fanboys pissed off at me. But I always give credit where credit's due. See, that's the thing. See, that's the thing where you won't find with any other YouTuber with me. Even if I bash somebody, I always, you know, tell you what their upside is. And when they do something good, I let you know. And no one else does that on here. Yeah, I can guarantee you that. Or what they'll do is they'll blame the wrestler, but not blame creative. There's so many of these people do that generic Roman Reigns hate shit and not, not blaming creative for refusing to change his character. So, you know, you have all these problems and everything. And, you know, why would you go ahead with the women's pay-per-view when they can't even get their shit, shit straight with the main product? They're going to deviate and do this exclusive pay-per-view. So why would they do something? I tell you why they're going to do it. To pat themselves on the back. This is not about putting on a good show. <laughs> like I said, guys, this is going to be a disaster. They're probably going to build up one big match from the past. They're probably going to do something like Alexa versus Trish or whatever. Something pretty obvious like that you're gonna get a big player from the current roster versus you know a legend from the past and they might sprinkle they're gonna probably sprinkle some others they'll probably do some you know stupid thing like throw everybody into a battle royal or do some 8 10 12 man tag so they could because they're, they're promising 50 women on this show over 50 how are they going to factor in 50 people into the show that the easiest way i could think for them to handle such a heavy load of of divas of women excuse me i said divas Ooh, that's a divas um excuse me i should get an electro shock for that is probably by doing some battle royal that's the only way they're going to be able to get that many people on a show they're going to have to do one of those old classic chestnuts, right? Just throw everybody into some fucking multi-man match. Eight-man tag, 10-man, 12, 10-12-man tag, whatever. You know, just to say that they put them all on the show. Because they, they're not going to care about this show. They know that the Smarks are going to buy the money. They're, you know, they're going to buy the money. They're going to buy the tickets. They're going to give their money to buy the tickets. They're going to go to the show, sit in the stands, try to get themselves over. They'll do the wave through all the matches. Boring, right? They're going to do all that stupid, tired-ass shit during the matches. You know, because the, all these same people, the Ryan Sands, Oh, I respect women. Woo! You know, and that they're going to... They're going to be putting this match over just like they were forcing Braun Strowman to do on Raw. Oh, I'm so happy for them. We all know that the build is going to be horrible for this show. And it's probably going to be uh, probably one of the least sh watched shows on the network for God's sakes. Because no one is going to care, basically. Because we all know... How build goes even for wrestling. Even when the when, so when the build for Mania is bad. When the build for WrestleMania is terrible and unfulfilling. Why would it be any different for some random ass pay-per-view like this? Just because it's the first ever one. You think they care? They want to just put this pay-per-view out there just so they could say that they did it. Just like all the others. Oh, we're making first here. Does anyone care about... Oh, we're making history. What history? Who cares about this history and everything? Now, okay, in all honesty, it's fun, you know, going back in time and looking at the statistics of, you know, what was the first ever this and what was an exclusive match and, you know, how many times they had this match. Okay, I'll admit I'm even a sucker for that too. I even like when they do the statistics for the Royal Rumble. But this is force-fed. You want to talk about Roman Reigns being force-fed? I have to ask us who even asked for this? When you only have the women on two segments per show, and you even see most of the time, like on SmackDown especially, they can't even get... Like you saw how they, they gathered all the women up together. That's what they mostly do. 
Remember on SmackDown, they'd line up all the women, six people in the row, one after the one after the other, cutting a promo like in robotic fashion, like just going down an assembly line of just like used parts of you know women's wrestlers. That's basically how it's so. So it, it's like with all of that known. They're going to go ahead with the pay-per-view anyway. Because they're going to give that a lore. It's the first ever. And if you don't get behind this, then, well, you know, you're just... You want to just hold these women back. You just want to watch your men's wrestling. And you don't want to see the women and everything. And they make, like, it's such a terrible, you know, thing. That, you know, if we were just fine with the bra and panties thing. Because, you know, maybe we just want to see a bunch of guys wrestling, you know, and see a lot of pretty girls just, you know, doing sexy shit and all that. And, you know, it's just a big entertainment fun house. But, you know, they want to do this thing where, you know, oh, we're sorry for our crimes that we committed. We made girls wrestle in bra and panties. Like, there's not, like, roller derby. And they don't have something called the lingerie bowl. On national television, how, how come they don't have to answer for that? Why are like WWE apologizing? We've committed crimes, treason. Oh, it's just wrestling. Who cares? I, I mean, it doesn't matter. You oh, we're, we're respectable. I'm like wearing a tie here, so I'm adjusting it. We're we're really respectable. I, I mean, for God's sakes, I mean th this is just. We're, we're, I, I mean, it doesn't matter. People are still going to consider this to be trailer park trash bullshit no matter what. I'm sorry. It has to be said. You're not going to get wrestling over to be some classy thing that's respected in the mainstream society. It's just, it's it, it's not going to happen. You, you, you know what I mean? It's just, you're not going to get people just, you know just honoring this thing and you know it's not going to receive academy awards and stuff like that it's just not going to happen people don't look on i mean it's guys in their underwear beating down on each other you're you're not going to get like oh this is some classy stuff i'm you know sorry you're not going to class to join up in WWE anytime soon just by having a women's... I mean, okay, I get it. It's like they've they've come a long way and everything. And, and you know, it, it's like you, you think back to, like, you know, when they had just matches where the only, like, women on the card really were, like, Sable and Luna and all that. You know, they, they've come a long way of presenting them a little bit better, but it, it's not that good. The women's wrestling is very sloppy. I'm sorry. I'm just being honest here. It's nothing like to be against women's wrestlers. I mean, there's a lot of talented ones. I, guys, more than anything, don't I put over all these girls, Alexa Bliss and Ronda Rousey, and I ranted and raved at WrestleMania how well she did. I said it was my favorite match on the card, mostly due to Rousey and her beating up Triple H. I said it was awesome. The best parts of Raw the past couple of weeks... I put over Rousey. One of my thumbnails even said this was awesome. I mean, if there, I think out of anybody here in the YWC, I'm probably the most honest about the women. I don't just say that I I, I, I like the women just to say it to impress people. So if there's any like female viewers, oh, oh he, he respects women. I like him. He's a swell guy. No, I say it because I mean it. I only say it when I mean it. If they do something good on the show, I'm going to say it. If they do something that's totally fucked up and boring and just horrible, I'm not, not going to necessarily blame them, but I'll blame the company. I'll say, oh, this, this shit sucks and I don't like it. And I'm not going to put it over. Because that's it. That's my opinion on it. It's not for something I'm not... I don't have a motive where I'm like trying to like do some subterfuge and like, ooh, I don't want you to like women's wrestling. Ooh. Uh, that's not the goal here. Uh, what the goal is to just basically give you my opinion and what I like about the product and what I don't. So And to entertain, basically. And some people, like I said will follow these video follow the WWE through these videos which is great I love when people say that that I'm entertaining enough that I'm like your new source for the WWE so you know the pay-per-view is good I'll do the same thing I did with the Royal Rumble I'll put it over I'll say it's good why wouldn't I what, what am I if it's a good show and I, I I'm because I am gonna watch it 
I will watch this pay-per-view mostly because I want to see how they do it. I want to see just how bad they do it. And if they do it good, I want to see how good they do it. I want to see Trish, and I want to see Lita, and I want to see Michelle McCool, and I want to see how they interact with the girls from the past. And I just want to see how the girls from the present even interact with each other on the show. How well they do it, how well the presentation is, and how big of a, an event does it feel. Does it feel something worthy of the first women's pay-per-view? Is WWE Evolution going to live up to that hype that they gave it on Raw? Because for all intents and purposes, I will say that the presentation, it felt very corporate and stiff, but, you know, they did make sure they put it right at the top of the show and, like, you know, this is going to be big and all that, and they made it, like, a grandizing moment. So I'm like, oh, all right. So let's see how they do with it. That's that's all I'm going to say. Let's be a little positive. Let's see how they do with it. I think they're going to do terrible with it, honestly. That's my opinion because the difference is here. I gave credit where credit was due for that Women's Royal Rumble. But now we're talking about a four-hour pay-per-view. We're talking about something way longer. Something with an additional three hours connected to it. It's going to be hard to do, especially when you've only got one title. And maybe you might introduce a women's tag title somewhere down the line. And you have a very limited roster that's not very well developed. And you don't have anybody over. And the people who you did have over, such as Charlotte and Asuka and even Sasha Banks to some degree, they're not over anymore. You ruined them. So... Unless you could keep the steam going for Ronda Rousey and you put her at the top of the card, which I, I hope by that time that, you know, she's still there. Uh, you know, I mean, she will pro still be there. Obviously, it's going to be a few months away only, like less than three months. But, you know, I, I hope that they maintain that same level of overness, you know, and they don't keep on just treating her as a special attraction. Because that's not what she was supposed to be. But they keep on taking her off the show every other week. So, you know. There there could be a big upside to this. They could be doing something, you know. Um, they could be doing good things with, 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 with this show. There's a lot of potential, like I said, for the women of the past. They could do a lot of fun segments. Some good promos. Some memorable moments. And not just for the pay-per-view, mind you. But the Raws and SmackDown leading up to the pay-per-view could also be as equally enticing and interesting and fun and entertaining and comedic and whatever you want to do with them. But with the current creative team, I just don't see how that's possible. Like I said, when an event like WrestleMania, when the build is that fucking horrible and that, you know, grating and, and, and that, you know, just mind-numbingly bad... Why would it be any different for just a pay-per-view like this? I, I just don't see how I can really set my standards that high to, you know, I I expect it to be decent. At the very least, when it's that bad. Like, they can't... That's the hor most horrible thing. They can't even make it subpar. Like, forget about it being, you know, uh, decent or good or awesome. That's way beyond what they're capable of right now. But could they at least make it subpar? Because, so, you know, when you, when you say the word subpar, that's not completely or wholly bad, right? It, it, it's just like of low quality, below average. They're not even good enough to be considered below average at this point. Because to say that they're below average... Would mean like it would be like a three or a four on, on a scale from one to ten. We're talking about a clear cut zero, one, a negative one at this point when it comes to build, character development, consistency, excitement, uh, you know, heat, any of these elements, intrigue, just having a generally interesting, consistent show of any type of quality whatsoever. All those elements, they're not there. So, I don't understand how I'm supposed to, like, be excited for this show or to be intrigued by it like some people. Just just not possible. Just not a le uh, realistic um, way of approaching this show. I'm just going to basically just end the video right here and just basically say that there's potential to have a really good show here. You're going to have a lot of talent on this show, I'm sure. Uh, a lot of people that know what they're doing, very experienced, uh, a lot of competent individuals. But we have a very incompetent 
form of management in the WWE. We have, uh, you know, Stephanie who's just woo and just, you know, uh, a creative team that's just obsessed with the way, you know, type of shit. So, yeah, I don't know how this is going to go and I'm expecting it to be quite bad. But hopefully... The bill will be bad, but maybe the show will be decent, like some WrestleManias. I don't know. Might be too much to ask for. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, click the bell, watch my other videos. And this has been your YWC Champ, and I'm signing out.